Hey everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to solve problem number 2352, equal row and column pairs. First, we will see the explanation of the problem statement, then the logic and the code. Now let's dive into the solution. So in this problem, we need to find row and a column pair. So the pair should be in the same order as well as the pair should be consisting of the same elements, right? So for example, the third column and third row are same. So this can be counted as one pair. Also, with the third column, I can form the same kind of pair with the fourth row. So this is also considered as one pair. So we need to increase the count by two. So we need to form pairs like this. So the goal of the problem is to find how many such pairs exist in the given grid, right? So now we will see how we are going to do this. So first we are going to create a dictionary called row count where the keys will be the rows and the values will be the count of the row. So first we are taking the first row. So the first row appeared only once, right? Then we are taking the second row and the second row also appeared once in the given grid. So here third and fourth row are equal. So the count of the order is two since it appeared two times. Then I will be having a count variable which will be initialized as zero. So this will be our result variable, right? After that, we have to take transpose of the given grid. So the reason why we are taking transpose is that we will be able to access the columns. We have done with the rows. So now we need to check the columns, right? So in order to access the columns, we need to take transpose. So here I have the transpose matrix of the given grid, right? So now we need to check whether this row exists in our row count. So basically these are my columns in my original grid. Since we took transpose of the grid, they are appearing in rows, right? So now we need to check whether we have the same set of values in the row count dictionary or not. So yes, there is the same set of values, right? So we need to take the value that is one, which means I can form one pair with the given set of values. So this is column and this is row. So I can form one pair. So we need to add this one to the count. So the count becomes one now. Then we need to check whether we have this set of values or not in my row count dictionary. It is not there, right? So we won't add anything to my count. Then we pick the next set of values. And then this particular set of values exist in my row count dictionary. And the value is two, which means I can form two pairs with the given column, right? So here we had two rows, which was repeated. And with the two rows, I can form two pairs with this one column. That is the reason we are having two here, right? And then we need to add this two to the count. So now the count becomes three. So then we need to pick the next set of values. And this set is not in my row count dictionary. So we don't have to add anything to my count, right? Then we are done with all the rows and columns. Then finally we need to return count, right? So there are three equal row and column pairs can be formed using the given example, right? That's all the logic is. Now we will see the code. So before we code, if you guys haven't subscribed to my channel, please like and subscribe. This will motivate me to upload more videos in future. And also check out my previous videos and keep supporting guys. So initially we are initializing the row counts dictionary and we will be having the count variable, which will be initialized as zero at the start. So then we are going to pick each and every row from the grid and we will convert that row into a tuple. Then we will store that in the row counts dictionary as one if it appears once, else if it is repeated, it will increase by one, right? So then we need to do the transpose of the matrix to access the columns. So where the zip function will give us the list of tuples where we will be having the columns as tuples, right? Then we need to check whether that particular column exists in our row count dictionary or not. If it is present, 
then we will increase the count by that particular value that we stored in the row count dictionary. Then finally, we will be returning the count variable. That's all the code is. Now we will run the code. As you guys see, it's pretty much efficient. So both time and space complexity will be order of n into m, right? Thank you guys for watching this video. Please like, share and subscribe. This will motivate me to upload more videos in future. Now also check out my previous videos. Keep supporting. Happy learning. Cheers guys.